Hello. I've never shown my bookshelves or what books I own because I sit in this spot in my room because it has the best lighting. But off to the side is where we have my books. But I've never really shown them before on my channel. Um, but over the past few days I've been filming the process of reorganizing my books and also filming a quick little bookshelf tour as well just so you guys can see what my books look like how many books I have and sort of just like my initial thoughts on some of them this video might just be trash I can't tell <laughs> I don't know if it's interesting to sort of see the slow but I don't know if it's interesting to see kind of like empty shelves and then slowly how I organize them and then I don't know if it's interesting to see the before and the after I don't know so I just hope that people I hope that you the viewer like this video and I hope that you find this interesting um, because it's been a really fun journey for me um, and I hope that you like this video <sighs> anyway I'm too I'm too nervous about it I need to just like let go you know I need to let go of my worry but I can't, I really, really can't. Thank you so much for watching and uh, let's just get into it. So I bought two bookcases yesterday and I put them together and now I have to move all of my books and reorganize them because I have these three which are the like Vizjo from Ikea or something but then I also have another two off to the side right here because I'm out of room. So I need to take this packed amount of books and move some of them to the other side of the room. But this is the before. One shelf down, only two more to go. I have all the trinkets that were on the shelf, my horror section, and then my Harry Potter books. Ooh, spooky organization. I'm gonna finish these other ones. Two down, one more to go. By the way, this is what my book collection deconstructed look like, looks like. One more shelf to go, and boom. It is the next day, as you can see, I successfully moved all of these books. I have all of these still to put away. This looks like trash. My room looks like actual trash. Um, but I did work on these guys. So these are done. Now I just need to put all of the books back or reorganize them and put them back on these shelves. So, pray for me. A 
Okay, update. This is what I have so far. I've put together the horror section, middle grade, and then continued middle grade, and children's books. I don't know if I like my horror section. I think I might change it eventually, but I do like how the middle grade is coming out. I have over half still to do, so. I did rearrange the horror section. I cut it into two bits, so there's there and then there. I think it looks a lot better. But it's coming along. Slowly and yet surely. So I finished organizing and because I'm just that lucky, there's like no sun in the sky. The clouds are gray as shit. So the lighting, I'm sorry if it's bad. By the way, um, one of you guys recommended Small Spaces by I think Kathleen Arden. It's like a middle grade horror novel. And I've been listening to it while organizing and oh my God, is it so good. I'm absolutely in love with it. So thank you very much. I've had all of the cats in my room while all of this is happening. Yesterday I finished organizing all of my books. Finally, this is the finished result versus what it was before. And honestly, it looks so good. Look at this. Look at these pumpkins. Look at these fucking pumpkins, bitch. Is my room the embodiment of Halloween? <laughs> I think it just might be. I'm obsessed with it. I think it looks so good. I'm so happy with how it turned out. I am on my way to having a library. Bitch, my dreams are coming true. I don't know about you, but my dreams are coming true. So this is how the other side ended up. And honestly, also, obsessed. Like, I love, I love my little pumpkin, my little skulls, my little ornaments. I love my big fat cat with his big fat mouth. When I run out of room again, because it will inevitably happen, probably within the next uh, 6 to 12 months. Have the shelves wrap around the room, um, but they're going to have to be smaller, of course, because of the, the ceiling. But I'm going to have the shelves wrap around the room, and it's just going to be beautiful. Anyway, I'm going to do a quick bookshelf tour. Hopefully it's quick. So let's get started. The lighting for this part of my room is so bad. I I have a lamp <laughs> just beaming light onto it. Hopefully the quality isn't too bad. Um, but I do want to give you guys like a quick overview of like what I actually have on my shelves. Just because I do love bookshelves tours. And so I imagine you guys would as well. Anyway, let's start over here. So these are German editions of Harry Potter. I do collect Harry Potter books. These editions in particular are super, super, super beautiful. They are probably my favorite um, covers. I of course can't read them because they're in German, but I think they're beautiful and they look amazing on my shelves. And that's what's really important, guys, is that things are beautiful and that they look nice on your shelves. Now, if we move down one, we have more Harry Potter books. I have, I have the American Harry Potter collection there. And then I think that one is the 10th anniversary 
That one is like a sixth printing, Tales of Beetle the Bard in the American edition, and then, and then the book club edition, which is, I guess, Sorcerer's Stone. Um, and then next to that here, I have the Harry Potter um, special editions that they released in the American covers. They only released the fifth, sixth, and the seventh one. Um, they're really, really beautiful. Let me know too, guys, if you want to see like an in-depth Harry Potter collection video, because I would love to do that because I love talking about the different editions. And then below that we have more Harry Potter books. Surprise! We have the new Bloomsbury editions right there. The uh, screenplays for Fantastic Beasts and Crimes of Grindelwald and then the American paperbacks on the other side there. Just below that we have more Harry Potter books. So I have um, just a mix and match of things like the 20th anniversary editions. We have the Dutch paperback pocket edition these are so beautiful um, and then I have a few French copies and then more of the house editions what's funny though is my roommate she speaks a little bit of French and she said that the uh, French translation works out to Harry Potter and the school of witches <laughs> anyway we have Latin Harry Potter Spanish Harry Potter and then Harry Potter um, in these um, American covers that they released and, and then we have the Bloomsbury adult hardcovers. If we go back up to the top um, in the next bookcase we have more Harry Potter books. I have a print of the castle. I have uh, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Tales of Beetle the Bard, and then all of the currently released illustrated ed editions. These ones are super 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 beautiful and I love them so much. And then next to that we have the classic Bloomsbury slash Raincoast editions. And then I have a paperback set of the Bloomsbury new editions that they've been releasing. And then down one we have more Harry Potter books. On this side is the is the signature editions, more French uh, Harry Potter books, the American new box set and then the paperback of the Bloomsbury slash Raincoast editions. And then these ones right here are the Hogwarts library and the newer editions. If we go down to the third row, we have some of my YA. We have Louise O'Neill, Scythe and Thunderhead, which I absolutely loved when I read them this year. Um, I'm so excited for the Toll, the third book. Um, we have a few queer books. We have Never World Wake by Marissa Pessel, which I also fucking loved this year. Um, Vicious and Vengeful, which I absolutely love as well. Descendant of the Crane, I haven't read yet, but I'm very excited to. I am so excited for The Queen of Nothing. I feel like I'm gonna die before I get to read it. Like, I'm so excited. I love this series so much. It's perfectly trash, and I love it so much. Um, and then we have, you know, Rick Yancey, Six of Crows, blah, blah, blah. I still need to read Crooked Kingdom, and I still haven't read The Book Thief. Below that, we have uh, classics and then more YA. Some of these classics aren't really classics, like The Little Stranger by Sarah Waters isn't a classic. I just thought that it kind of fit with the vibe. And in my head, Life of Pi by Yann Martel is a classic, but you probably wouldn't call it that. Anyway. This edition of Frankenstein by Mary Shelley is one of my favorite books on my shelves. Well, I'm destroying everything. I'll fix that later. Um, and then we have 1984, The, the Virgin Suicides, The Lolita. I have multiple copies of Lolita. Um, and then we have more uh, YA. So like my Rainbow Royale books, The Opposite of Always, Sadie, which I loved, um, Forbidden, which is apparently about a brother and sister who fall in love. I only bought it because it's like super taboo. I don't know if I'll ever read it. And then we have uh, more V.E. Schwab. I haven't read these darker shade books. Let me know in the comments down below if you like them. But yeah, so besides the mess, that's the last shelf. Here we have the fantasy slash sci-fi section of my collection. We have the Nevernight series over here, Name of the Wind. Book of Strange New Things. Somehow I've never mentioned The Library at Mount Char and it's one of my favorite books. It's like the perfect combination of horror and fantasy. I think if you like gory 
exhilarating books, you need to read this. It's so good. And I'm upset that I've never mentioned it before. Anyway, moving on. We have The Night Tiger, Prey of the Orange Tree. Um, and then in this thing right here, we have the fifth season. And then we also have uh, Evelyn Hardcastle, The Humans, The Air Affair. That's the fantasy section. Let's move on. Now, if we move down literally one part, we have my graphic novel slash comic book section. So we have Harrow, Harrow County, Ice Cream Man, Snot Girl, Regression, uh, Aqu Aquacorn Cove, and Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me. Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me is a great queer graphic novel. If you haven't read it, it's so good. You need to read it. And then, of course, on display, we have My Favorite Thing is Monsters, which I still haven't read, <laughs> but definitely need to, based on all the hype. Um, and then we have, next to that, my one of my favorite manga series as of 2019. It's called The Girl from the Other Side. I would recommend highly that you check it out. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's captivating. It's like mysterious and suspenseful. It's so good. And next to that, we have Lewis Undercover, uh, 100 Nights of Hero, The Curdles, Heartstopper. Heartstopper is one of the best graphic novels I've ever read. It's about gay love, and it will make your heart feel like it's bleeding out of your chest because it's so fucking cute. Please pick it up. You can buy it on Book Depository. It's the cutest thing you're ever going to fucking see. Period. And then moving on from that, we have Glister, Thornhill, and then this cute-ass fucking house. I love it so much. I have a thing about real-life things being miniaturized. I think it's the cutest and the most fun thing in the world. So anytime I see, like, a tiny house that's kind of, like, detailed like this, I lose my mind. I love it so much. Okay, this is a potentially awkward position, but I'm going to get through it. This is basically like the contemporary slash classic slash um, middle grade <laughs> shelf. This is basically like at the end of me organizing my books, these are the books that I realized I hadn't put anywhere else. But most of them are like contemporary slice of life kind of books. On the end here, we have 1984, Rebecca, Pride and Prejudice, the Handmaid's Tale, Putney, um, Everything I Never Told You. Nico, you're in the shot. <laughs> Normal People by Sally Rooney, right Nico, is one of the best books I've ever read. I read it this year and it's gonna be in my favorites. I loved it so much. Then we have Disappearing Night, Kate Atkinson, Burial Rights by Hannah Kent, Ask Again Yes, which is another book that I read and loved. Uh, the Dreamers by Karen Thompson Walker, the Serafina series, and then over here with this cute ass color coat and shit, we have How to, How to Not Die Alone, A Keeper by Graham Norton, Queenie, and This Is How It Always Is. I honestly love this shelf. I think it looks really cute, and I think Nico agrees. Okay, now we are moving up. We are, in case you're wondering, in the middle shelf at the top. So this is the horror slash thriller, but mostly horror uh, shelf. We have Carolyn Kepnes, Nick Cutter, Hex, Someone Like Me, Joe Hill, My Best Friend's Exorcism, Crushed by Katie Hamer. Um, I read earlier this year and absolutely loved it. It's a weird, like, thriller kind of book. Um, 10 out of 10 would recommend if you like kind of like fucked up, weird books about girls. So from there, we have Kin by Keelan Patrick Burke, which I'm sure you know is gospel and you should read it. Uh, then we have The Chrysalids, Apart in the Dark, and behind the thing, we have The Troop. We have Out, Nyctophobia, Devil's Day, Shirley Jackson, Nosferatu, The Devil Crept In, Kill Creek, Let Me In, and Little Heaven. Anyway, so that's the horror shelf. Let's move down one. Next on our tour, we have my middle grade shelf, which features 
what brings me most happiness in my life. Starting with this side, we have the Graveyard Book, The Tale of Despero, this cute-ass postcard, Tess of the Road, The Land of Never Endings, The Other Boy, Some Kind of Happiness. Speaking of Some Kind of Happiness, I read this author's YA like horror book or whatever, and it was kind of trash. I didn't love it. I'm interested to see what this book is like though, um, because it is middle grade and it does focus on like mental health. So let me know if you've actually read it and let me know if you liked it or if you hated it. So from there, we have Willow of the Wood, we have Nevermore, which is probably my favorite middle grade series of all time, The Ghost of the Road, we have His Dark Materials, Neverwood, or Neverwood, Wildwood, The Amber Spyglass, um, in hardcover. We have The Girl Who Drank the Moon, uh, Two Night Owl from Dogfish, The Lie Tree, Where Things Come Back, Pax, and then we have this cute ass little thing that says some bunny loves you. I think it honestly matches the whole this whole like aesthetic of this shelf perfectly. But anyway, let's move on. Again for an awkward angle, but this shelf we have my mystery slash thrillers. We have like the Crow Girl, Donna Tart, the Striker series by JK Rowling, Baby Teeth, which we which you know that we love. Social Creature, which you know we also thought it was okay. We have Night Film, which I don't know if I've ever spoken about, but is one of my all-time favorite books just ever. I love this book so much, and I love what Marisha Pessel did with it and how she wrote it, and the formatting is just wonderful. And then we have The Testaments by Margaret Atwood, which isn't really a thriller, but I thought it was like scary enough to put there. We have Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. We have Shelter, Dare Me, Ocean at the End of the Lane, Rebecca, and then over in the paperback stack, we have things like The Vegetarian, The Dumb House by John Burnside, which you know I love. We have Donald Tart again, Sharp Objects, Milkman, which by the way, I tried to read Milkman. I don't know, I don't know if I can get rid of it, but I also don't know if I can get through it. Do you know what I mean? Anyway, and then we have the Boring Girls and Meg Abbott. So yeah, so this is the thriller slash like mystery shelf. Let's move on once again. Okay, I'm sitting down for this one on the floor. Um, so let's make this quick. This is basically the books that I didn't know what to do with, so I put them down here. Um, we kind of have a mix of everything. So I have like Donna Tart over there, uh, some coming of age with the Age of Miracles, Landlie, Do Not Say We Have Nothing, Almost Love, The Gargoyle, um, this weird fantasy series by Lady Taylor that I read that I didn't love but also didn't hate at the same time. We have The Power, um, the Southern Reach trilogy. We have Deathless, the girl who could move shit with her mind, which I bought recently, literally only for the cover and for the title. We'll see how that goes. We have a stack of books that are very small. Um, so I have things like Fahrenheit 451, Kurt Vonnegut, uh, Ghost Wall by Sarah Moss, The Lottery by Shirley Jackson, Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuinston. I read it earlier this year and didn't love it, but then I also re recently bought the Rainbow Boys trilogy from like Amazon. Let me know if you guys would be interested in seeing a video of me re-exploring the queer fantasy that I had as a teenager. I would love to reread these books and film it. <laughs> this shelf is basically the junk drawer of my books, so let's move on. If we go to the next bookcase, at the very top, we have my other horror section. This one is basically themed around sort of like black, white, and then Keelan Patrick Burke because he's an actual angel. So in the corner here, we have Silence of the Lambs, The Ruins, which you know that I love. We have The Devil of Nong King, which we know that we love. The Girl Next Door, which we don't know how we feel. <laughs> We have House of Leaves, uh, Cloud by Eric McCormick, Goth. Can I just say that I love this cover? 
and I tried, or rather I started to read this and I don't know how I feel about it and I don't know if I should continue with it. I thought it was going to be like a novel, but instead it's a series of short stories focusing on these two teenagers um, and it's kind of morbid, which I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm expecting and it's really gruesome. I don't know if I should continue with it. Let me know if any of you have read this and let me know what you thought of it because I would really appreciate that. So after that, I have Under the Skin by Michelle Faber, which is one of the books that I need to read the most. We have Black Moon, we have Rings, A God in the Shed, The Bird Eater, Shirley Jackson's We Have Always Lived in the Castle, Michael McDowell's The Elementals, which you know we love. We have Bird Box, I'm Thinking of Ending Things, which again, we love. And then over here we have some uh, manga by or sorry, Junji Ito. So we have Gyo and then Uzomaki by, Junjo, by Junji Ito. Ito. I haven't read them yet, but I know that people say that his work is prolific and real fucked up. So I'm very excited. And then over here we have Dead Leaves by Keelan Patrick Burke, which is um, a bunch of short stories based around like the witching season and I believe Halloween. So I need to read that soon because Halloween is almost here. So that is the horror section. Let's move on downwards. Here we have the other half of my middle grade slash children's novels. On this side, we have a bunch of middle grade like Rodal, uh, a Spider-Man book, which is hilarious to me and um, something that I actually read when I was a teenager. Um, we have a, it's a kind of funny story, speak, Coraline, boy proof, uh, and then the bottom there, the yellow one here is a manga, but I thought that the spine looked good with the rest of it, so I kept it in. As you can see, we have another tiny house, and if that doesn't make you the happiest, I don't know what does. So the next to that, we have the Georgia Nicholson series. Uh, most of it at least. I think I'm missing book 10. Next to that we have Coraline or another edition of Coraline and then a bunch of Shel Silverstein books. I loved Shel Silverstein growing up. I love him now. I think his work is beautiful. And then next to that we have Eventown. This is a an actual thing that I found at the thrift store. It's meant to be a piggy bank. It's terrifying. I think it's supposed to be Stitch and it makes me so happy. Anyway, so the children's novels, we have things like Cicada, we have Shel Silverstein, The Darkest Dark, Petra, um, we have the Luna and Franklin series by Jen Campbell, we have a book called Robinson, uh, and here we are. I honestly love children's uh, picture books, so don't judge. Also, hi Nico. So I'm on the floor again because we had to move down. So this is the um, contemporary slice of life, slice of life, slice of life um, section. Things like Tin Man, Sally Rooney, Rabbit Cake, Clay Girl, Stay With Me. These are all kind of things that a bunch of British booktubers recommended on their channels and then I bought. I honestly, out of all of them, my favorite is Rabbit Cake such a good book. If you haven't heard of it or read, or read it, 10 out of 10 would recommend. And then we have Night Waking by Sarah Moss, which I haven't read still. We have The Essex Serpent, which I still also haven't read. We have The Trouble with Goats and Sheep, which is a book that I have read and loved and would recommend that you read and loved. <laughs> we have Silence of the Girls, which is a gorgeous book. Haven't read it though. Are we surprised? Next to that, we have Station Eleven. We have Daisy Jones, which I read and thought was mediocre. A Little Mermaid retelling, uh, Haruki Murakami, Jen Campbell, Women Talking, Mouthful of Birds, Girl in Pieces, The Poppy War, which I didn't love The Poppy War, and I don't know if I should continue with the series and read the second one, or if I should just unhaul it because I really didn't connect with it and often I forget that I even read it. I don't know. Let me know if what you think I should do. <laughs> Next to that, we have a hardcover of The Bear and the Nightingale. We have a book called Black Witch and then uh, Bellevue Square. I think that's how that's pronounced. I'm not sure. But yeah, so again, this is kind of 
like a catch-all shelf. Like it's not one thing particularly, but it's also not everything. So yeah, moving on. So we are on the last shelf of the tour. So this is the George R. R. Martin and Stephen King shelf, as you can see. So we have Pet Cemetery, The Institute, Doctor Sleep, Dolores Claiborne, Misery, Different Seasons, and Under the Dome, all by Stephen King. We have a German copy of um, A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. Don't ask me why I have it. My roommate found it at a thrift store and was like, you need this. And I was like, but why? And she was like, you just do. So I bought it <laughs> for no reason. Um, and then I have a first edition copy of Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. Anyway, and then I have the rest of the series, Clash of Kings, Storm of Swords, uh, Feast for Crows, and A Dance with Dragons. So that's the last shelf. And also that's a cactus. Let's do a little overview, shall we? So this has been my bookshelf tour. Um, I'm sorry if it seemed like I'm like rushing it. I just don't want the video to be too long. Anyway, um, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope this video was interesting to you. If not, then I will have other content. Um, but for now, I'm really grateful that you stuck around. Uh, please hit subscribe and like this video. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.